Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a very interesting video about the future of the pushback truck. Or in other words, the end of the pushback truck because looking at this video, this plane is effortlessly moving out of its gate position, but the question is, how? Let's take a sneak peek into the future of airplane ground movements and let's get started. <laughs> Uh, Delta 2092 ground, splendid, 31 left for departure, left on uh, Bravo and hold short of Julia. Today's video is brought to you by Wheel Tug, making airplanes faster on the ground. We've all been there. You've gotten comfortable in your seat, the flight attendant closes the door, Boarding completed. and seconds later you hear an announcement by the captain, sorry ladies and gentlemen, we're experiencing some delays as no pushback tractor is currently available. For now, we can only wait for one to arrive. An aviation enthusiast then might stand up and shout, why don't you perform the power back procedure? <laughs> By which the pilot uses reverse thrust to push himself out of the gate position. This procedure though got banned at nearly every airport as it is too loud, potentially damages the engines and is far too dangerous for ground crews being hit by accelerated debris. Well, pushing it back by hand is also an option, but yet again dangerous, and I highly doubt that airports have the manpower to perform this procedure for every plane. But there is hope on the horizon. How about putting an electric motor into the nose wheel, powerful enough to drive the plane backwards and forwards? I'm sure many of you might have had that thought before. In 2018, I went to the Farnborough Air Show in the UK and I came across this interesting stand. The stand was huge and there was a model Boeing 737 taxiing around the apron. Now at a second glance, I realized that the engine intakes were covered and the nose wheel was flashing. Okay, this stand had my attention. Now next to the mock-up apron was a partial Boeing 737 cockpit with which the pilot seemed to control, or shall I say drive, the model airplane around the taxi lines. By this point, I had to know what this was all about. Let me introduce you to Wheel Tug. Essentially what Wheel Tug has done is fit two small electric motors within the wheel rim of the nose wheel. Now the motors are powered by the APU, which is the small turbine in the tail that ordinarily provides the power to start the main engines and run the air conditioning packs while on ground. These motors are powerful enough to drive the plane backwards out of the gate position. Now within the cockpit is a small control panel mounted next to the throttle stand, allowing the pilots to activate the wheel tuck system. Now as the pilot presses the reverse button, the motors get powered and drive the plane backwards. So just enjoy this video as this 737 smoothly pushes itself out of the gate position. I mean, look at it, that's amazing. They even put covers into the engines to showcase that they aren't running and assisting the turn. And the maneuver you see here is called the twirl, as it is performing a 180 degree turn only shifting to one side by the width of the landing gear. What is really cool about this though, is that the airplane with the wheel tug is so maneuverable that it can do this turn while still in the gate area, leaving the taxiway clear and exclusively for other moving aircraft. Now this can do a lot to solve the kind of ground congestions that clogs airports all around the world. And please be advised, this video is in real time speed, meaning the entire turn only takes 45 seconds. Today, it often takes five minutes or more to push back the aircraft and detach the tug and then have the aircraft ready to taxi forward under engine power. Now back to the wheel tug control column. Upwards of the reverse push button, you have this little thumb wheel with which the pilot can control the forward speed of the motor, meaning you not can only reverse, but also taxi forward with the wheel tuck system. Why that's an absolute revolution you'll see in a minute. So as the pilot moves the thumb wheel forward, the motor switches into forward gear and the thumb wheel can be set to a desired position, freeing the pilot's hands for other tasks. 
You now may ask, how do you steer it and slow it down again? Now for the steering and braking part, nothing really changes. The pilot still uses the steering tiller to rotate the nose wheel accordingly, as they did in the conventional way. To slow down the aircraft, the pilot applies brake pressure at the tip of the rudder pedals. Wheel tug is primarily designed to operate in and around the gate area, saving both the time it takes for very complicated pushback routines as well as the uncertainty that airlines need to budget for when things don't go quite right. <laughs> so here's a list without wheel tug. And here's a list with wheel tug. And as you see, a much shorter list, or let's say less people involved. Because wheel tug is designed mostly to save time at the gate, the system does not go as fast as aircraft could taxi. It runs at up to eight miles per hour, but the engines need to warm up before takeoff in any case. So the engines will be used for high speed taxi while wheel tug helps speed up operations near the gate. But the more interesting question is, why does time even matter? Now the short answer is that if time was not important, there would be no air travel. <laughs> we could just use donkeys or pogo sticks. <laughs> The biggest single competitive advantage that low-cost carriers like Southwest, Ryanair and Indigo have is that they are faster at delivering passengers to their destination. They do this by making the ground operations more efficient. An airline executive once said, the quicker you are in the air, the quicker you get where you are going. Airplanes are built to fly, so when they're not flying, they're not making any money. And the low-cost carriers spend more time of their day flying because they work hard to spend less time on the ground, which explains why they are usually making more profits. By removing the pushback truck and all the complexity, at least five minutes can be saved each and every flight by using what is known in the industry as the electric taxiing or e-taxi. Also keep in mind the other benefits such as saving fuel and quite a lot of ground emissions, much quieter operation as only the APU is running during taxi or the reduction in engine damage, hence maintenance costs. Did you know that most of the engine wear is due to ground ops? Every time the pilot applies so-called breakaway thrust to get the plane moving and up to taxi speed, tiny bits of debris get sucked into the engine, damaging the fan blades and the turbine. All of this can be reduced by taxing electrically. Now here's another great maneuver I'd like to show you. Imagine you've just landed, you started the APU and you turn off the engines once the required cool down time has passed. Then you activate the wheel tuck system and drive electrically to your gate. Now if the airport is equipped with two jet bridges at your parking position, the twist maneuver comes to play. You park the 77 sideways to the terminal building. Now, as the engines are already shut down, the jet bridges and ground crews can immediately attach to the plane. The two bridges will allow passengers to get off and on much faster and avoid bottlenecks. Now, we've all been stuck in long queues to get on or off an airplane. Once boarding is completed, which will take much less time, the plane just sort of twists out of the gate position onto the taxiway. As it will taxi without the engines of jet power, terminal buildings and ground crews aren't subject to the powerful jet wash, making it a much safer, smoother and shorter turnaround. I'm still amazed how quiet and effortlessly these pilots just taxi out of the gate. It seems so easy. Okay, let's look at some commonly asked questions. How heavy is the wheel tuck system in total? The entire system adds approximately 200 kilograms, including the powered wheels. But the fuel savings alone, by not using the engines as much on the ground, can compensate for this. Fuel savings will also reduce emissions, making wheel tuck a way to help make commercial aircraft more sustainable again. What are the main components? Now the 737 will be fitted with two new titanium wheels, each of which contains an electric motor within the wheel rim. Some minor strengthening components must be added to the nose wheel landing gear. How does it work mechanically? Within the rim sits an electric motor and a clutch, allowing the wheel to spin freely when wheel tuck is not being used, for instance, for the takeoff roll and landing. In the unlikely event of a system failure, the pilots then just revert to the conventional pushback and taxi procedures. How do the pilots see whilst reversing out of the gate using the wheel tuck system? 
Now, optional, the plane can be fitted with the wheel tug vision system, which comes with a camera mount on the belly of the fuselage, including four cameras and viewing angles that are projected onto the pilot's electronic flight bag within the cockpit. How long does it take to install? Now, installing wheel tug is estimated to take two overnights. Now, since airplanes have to go through longer maintenance checks every year, the installation can also be done during these longer ground times. How high are material and installation costs? Now, the entire system is provided on a lease basis that is very similar to the power by the hour or power by cycle. It's the same way many airlines lease components like the tires and engines. Which planes can be fitted with the wheel tuck system? Now, the first version for the Boeing 737 is expected to be in service next summer. The Airbus A320 is expected to follow. Now, a lot of airlines have shown great interest in the system. Over 2,000 delivery positions have been reserved by the airlines on five continents. I've seen a lot of innovations within the airline industry over the past 15 years. And I have to say, this one stands out by a long shot in terms of time and fuel saving. As I said before, planes are built to fly and it's always been a hassle dealing with them on ground. Wheel tuck just gives that plane that independence to cut down the time spent on ground and whilst it does, it even saves the environment by reducing the emissions. In my opinion, this will be the way planes move around at airports in the nearby future. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video about an incredible innovation. Please check out the Wheel Talk website at www.wheeltalk.com for more information. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. Perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best.